Welcome to Maintenance 102, Replacing a Failed Disk Drive. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. Maintenance Center. Analysis of drive failures by NetApp determined that most drive failures are correctable soft failures rather than mechanical failures that make data inaccessible. Six years ago, we added functionality to Data ONTAP that proactively finds sick disk drives and replaces them before they fail. This feature is called Maintenance Center and only requires a minimum of two spare drives for each drive type in the system. Whenever you see a failed disk drive, chances are it has been processed by Maintenance Center twice and then banished from the system rather than put data at risk. Replacing a failed disk drive is a simple and safe process as long as you take some basic precautions. Before making any changes to a running system, you always want to verify there are no other issues that could make the situation worse. The freely available Config Advisor tool is perfect for checking the health of a system. Next, verify that Data on Tap has finished either replicating healthy data blocks on a disk drive or rebuilding a failed drive on a spare disk. If you remove the disk too soon, you may cause a multi-disk panic and experience downtime. If the system has the high-density DS4486 shelves attached, be absolutely certain both drives in a drive carrier have completed the data evacuation process or you will have two failed drives to take care of. The sample system log entry indicates FCAL drive 3A.22 and Bay 6 of shelf 1 has been successfully failed out of the system. The agar status minus F for 7 mode and storage disk show command for clusters are the first place to check. Then check the message logs and auto supports to confirm the disk ID as well as find completion notification messages from data on tap. The sample console output confirms disk ID 3A.22 has failed and is located in drive base 6 of shelf ID 1. Shelf drive bay numbering. Drive bays of the old DS14 shelves are numbered from right to left. Bays 0 and 1 enable SCSI and closure surfaces, so always ensure at least one of those bays has a working disk drive to prevent the shelf from going offline. Our failed drive is in bay 6. SAS shelf bays start at the top left bay and go left to right, then wrap around to the left side of the next row of disks. The shelf bezels are marked with the starting and ending bay numbers for each row to make locating a drive easier. Before pulling a failed drive, manually trigger an auto support to capture the current state of the system. Then, we want to double check we are about to remove the correct disk and not accidentally remove a healthy disk. The failed disk should have an amber LED, but sometimes a defective LED may fail to turn on. Once we have verified physical location of the drive we want to replace, we pull the drive and give the system 15 seconds to register the removal of the drive before installing the new drive. Our first step after opening a console session is to save the output to a log file. On a 7 mode system, the agar status minus F command will list all failed disks on a storage controller. On this cluster node, rerun the storage disk show command and narrow the results to only disks with their state set to broken. Here we see that disk ID 0D.21 is broken. A physical inspection of the disk shelves attached to port 0D normally will find a disk with the amber LED lit. If the LED is not lit, we can turn it on manually. Although the disk already shows is broken, to be safe we give the command to manually fail out the disk. If this disk were part of an aggregate, we would answer Y to fail it gradually and trigger a disk copy. This is a spare disk and has no data, so we reply No.
we trigger an auto support before pulling the drive. We identify the failed disk with the amber LED and verify it is disk 21 in the stack of FC shells. Depress the drive carrier release and pull the drive. Wait 15 seconds and then insert the replacement disk drive. Replacing a failed SAS drive is similar to an FC drive. We identify the drive with the Amber LED lit. In this video, it's the drive with the side-by-side -side LEDs lit up. Depress the drive carrier and pull the drive. Wait 15 seconds and insert the new disk drive. After replacing a failed drive, we check to ensure there are no longer any broken disks in the cluster. To complete the process, we verify the system is functioning normally again. First, we want to verify the system no longer sees any failed disk drives. Then run Config Advisor again to ensure nothing has changed as a result of our work. Sending out another auto support is a good way to record the return of the system to a healthy status. For most customers, the defective drive must be placed in the box the new drive was shipped in and then returned to NetApp. For high security customers, the customer pays a nominal fee for replacement disk drives so they can physically destroy failed drives to ensure no data accidentally leaves their facility. For service engineers, our next step is to fill out a service engagement report or a trip report. 